What's happening guys, Sam Adams here and welcome to another episode of The Drop. And this week, if you are a fan of sports, including racing, hockey, soccer, and more, then you are going to be a fan of the games coming out this week. And there are a couple of other games coming out for those of us like myself that aren't necessarily so into sports. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. <laughs> So, kicking things off this week, we have Metroid Samus Returns coming to the Nintendo 3DS. Brave the hostile terrain of an alien planet, teeming with vicious life forms as legendary bounty hunter Samus Aran. Her mission, terminate the Metroid menace in the masterful reimagining of her 1991 Game Boy Adventure. Samus Aran's arsenal has been enhanced with new moves and abilities that are sure to help her face the deadly surprises that await. This intense, side-scrolling action platform is a great entry point into the Metroid franchise and perfect for returning fans as well, and it's available only on the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. So with this one, of course, he did have Metroid Prime 4 that was announced at E3, but alongside of it, we got this little small, very minuscule announcement of Metroid Samus Returns coming out on the Nintendo 3DS, which is in fact what people have been asking for for many, many years. A classic side-scrolling platforming Metroid game is what people have been asking for for a long time now, and it is finally coming out on the Nintendo 3DS, and of what I hear, it is fantastic. I've seen some people get it early, they have had good things to say, but with that being said, why isn't the thing on the Nintendo Switch? Don't get me wrong, I'm glad we're finally getting a side-scrolling Metroid platformer, because like I've been saying, that's what people have been wanting, but why just put it out on the Nintendo 3DS? Why not give it to the big kid on the block, the Nintendo Switch, and let that thing take off and sell millions? I suppose that's why I'm not on Nintendo's marketing team, because obviously we have different perspectives of how this should go. Uh, but if you are interested and you have a Nintendo 3DS or a 2DS of any kind, then Metroid Samus Returns is coming out this week, and it looks to be a pretty great one. Next up, we have Dishonored Death of the Outsider coming to the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC. From the award-winning developers at Arcane Studios comes Dishonored Death of the Outsider, the next standalone adventure in the critically acclaimed Dishonored series. Be a badass supernatural assassin and take on the role of notorious Billy Lurk as she reunites with her mentor Dodd in order to pull off the greatest assassination ever conceived. Building upon Dishonored 2's signature gameplay and art style, Death of the Outsider features all of the series' hallmarks, including brutal combat systems, unique level design, and a immersive storytelling that responds to your every choice. With compelling characters and exhilarating action, Death of the Outsider is the perfect entry point for those new to the Dishonored series while delivering a significant expansion of the gameplay for the world for longtime fans. This game is one that I think is going to be one of the better games of the fall season. Of course, it is not going to compete with your big name Call of Duties or your big name Destinies, uh, but it is still going to be one that is warmly received by fans because in my opinion, this is kind of like the Lost Legacy, the Uncharted game that came out a couple of weeks back. Much like the Lost Legacy, I have a hunch that Dishonored Death of the Outsider probably began as some form of DLC content where there were a couple of missions here and there featuring a new character, and then it kind of snowballed into more character design, more plot development, and lo and behold, now we have a brand new game. Albeit not as content rich as Dishonored 2, I almost guarantee that Death of the Outsider is going to give you a fantastic experience, much like The Lost Legacy, where it did not quite deliver the punch of Uncharted 4, but it did fulfill fans' expectations of what a standalone DLC game should be and should represent when you compare it to the original big release. So again, if you are interested in more of the Dishonored universe, Death of the Outsider is coming to the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC this week. Next up, we have a game called Sem, I believe is how you say it. At S E U M, and then you have the subtitle, which is what I'm going to refer to the game as Speedrunners from Hell, uh, which is coming to the PlayStation 4. Speedrunners from Hell is the world's only competitive heavy metal first person platformer. You have my attention. Slice every last millisecond as you race and blast your way through deadly arenas, teleport, jump, fly, bounce, and drop in a hundred merciless and fast paced maps for the ultimate prize your soul. Like the bastard child of Quake 3 and Super Meat Boy, Speedrunners from Hell is truly hardcore and focuses on speed and fast reaction. Race and jump over platforms and bounce pads and shoot fireballs to reach an exit portal in a minimal amount of time. Reverse time and gravity compete with all players for the top time in the online high scores. Only the toughest players will receive their Uber Skull medals. However, if mind-blowing speed and pumping adrenaline through your body is too boring, then search for the beer cans deeply hidden in each level. Who knows what secrets can be discovered by finding all of these delicious refreshments. So to start things off, the concept of this game, heavy metal first person platformer that focuses on speed running. That right there, my friends, is Twitch gold. Streamers, pay attention here. This is the game you need to be playing right now if you have a PlayStation 4. 
Now, of course, some people are not oriented towards time-based content. If you are not a completionist, then you may not be a fan of speedrunners from hell. Uh, but with that being said, there are collectibles within the game. Like they said, the beer cans, there are goals that can be reached and achieved and the medals that can be unlocked. Uh, so essentially it isn't only focusing on speed running, but there are other elements to the game as well to appeal to those that aren't necessarily speed runners. So again, if speed runners from hell sounds like something you might be interested in, it is coming out on the PlayStation 4 this week and it has been out on the PC since I believe summer of 2016 and has a five star rating on Steam for a pretty affordable price. And now we are reaching our sports content. So for those that are looking for more traditional style games, there really aren't any, uh, but for sports games, this is the meat of the episode for you. We have NBA Live 18 coming out on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. NBA Live 18 introduces The One, an all new dynamic career experience centered on your player, your choices, and your legacy. Embark on your quest to be the greatest basketball player on the planet, in the league, and the streets with or against other players in solo, co-op, and multiplayer challenges delivered through live event content. Dominate the court with innovative one-on-one -on -one gameplay, arming you with an arsenal of new moves for each position with unprecedented control and responsiveness. Put your newfound skills to the test as you manage and build your favorite team in franchise and live ultimate team. Okay, so NBA Live 18, there were a couple of big features in there. You have a new The One style mode where it's pretty much a campaign where you follow your character, yada, 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 all the way through the ranks. You're the next Kobe. Uh, you know, it's that kind of thing. The big news here is that NBA Live is going to be competing directly with NBA 2K yet again, with the games coming out pretty much back to back, week to week. Uh, and in some cases, you can actually play NBA 2K this week, and if a lot of people are basketball fans, chances are they probably are going to be getting 2K over live, regardless of the price. Speaking of the price, it does appear that the developers and the marketing team knows that NBA Live 18 has no chance against NBA 2K, uh, so they have dropped the price of the pre-order down 20 bucks. Instead of 60 bucks, you can actually get the full NBA Live experience for 40, uh, which definitely does give it a bit of an edge as compared to NBA 2K18 for those of us like me that are more price oriented. As many of you know, if you've been on the channel for a while, I'm not a basketball guy. I'm not going to be playing this game. I won't rent it. Chances are I will never even lay my hands on it. But with that being said, I'm excited to see how it compares and how it competes with 2K whenever that game comes out next week. Next up, we have NHL 18 coming to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. And before I even read this, uh, this game looks beautiful for a hockey game. Uh, but EA Sports NHL 18 delivers the speed, creativity, and action of today's young NHL superstars with new creative attack controls and an all new defensive skill stick. Play the fast paced arcade inspired three on three NHL threes mode or create your own custom 30 second NHL team with the new expansion draft. Do it all with the most co-op and competitive multiplayer options ever in an EA Sports NHL game. As previously mentioned, NHL 18 introduces NHL threes, a bold new take on fast paced over the top three on three hockey action. The all new arcade inspired hockey experience features faster gameplay, bigger hits and high scoring action that is easy to pick up and play. Now, as I think I've mentioned a couple of times here, I'm no sports fan, but I can appreciate a good game of hockey from time to time. Uh, but I've never really been able to really sink my teeth into an NHL game because the nature of hockey itself is slow paced, much like soccer. And so although it may be low scoring, there is a bit more action. Uh, but as far as a video game adaptation of that kind of action, it's never really grabbed me in the way that it grabs other people. That's where NHL 3s comes into play. I believe this is kind of catering to the Madden NFL arcade fans that are in a lot of people like myself uh, that like that high scoring gameplay that like that action-packed stuff that happens on every single turn you know what I'm saying I like to have a lot of action built into my sports and so whenever hockey can't necessarily accomplish that in its nature uh, this game comes through brings me NHL threes and then I have a better way to play the game that is more catered to my level of interest that it must hold in other words you have realism for people that like realism and you have arcade mode for people like me this is one of those games where if you are a hockey fan, you know if you were going to be getting this one, but for those that may be on the fence, NHL 18 is definitely worth checking out if you have the opportunity to rent it. You should definitely try NHL 3s. It may be something that caters to your needs, and it may in fact get you into hockey altogether. Who knows? But NHL 18 is coming to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One this week. Next up, PES Pro Evolution Soccer 2018 is coming to the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 3, the Xbox One, the Xbox 360 as well. Uh, Where Legends Are Made encapsulates the return of PES with new features, modes, and an unparalleled gameplay experience. This year's edition brings the biggest changes to the award-winning series seen in a decade, which it's been around for a decade, which will set a new standard of soccer 
Soccer games and raise expectations for the future of the franchise. No part of PES 2018 has been left untouched, giving you new ways to play with a number of gameplay improvements, online co-op, random selection match, and a complete presentation overhaul with lifelike player models, new menus, and real player images. So, Pro Evolution Soccer, this game franchise is directly competing with FIFA, and to be honest with you, it is losing. However, for an underdog, it's still doing a lot of stuff right. The game is coming out on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, giving them a leg up on FIFA right out of the gate. On top of that, it doesn't really look that bad. The game does look to be pretty graphically up there next to FIFA, however, not FIFA 18 by any means. When I look at gameplay of PES 2018, I feel like I'm watching gameplay of FIFA 16, and so although that does seem to be a pretty big sacrifice as far as graphic quality goes, uh, the game is still holding its own because it does have a pretty ravenous fan base if I do say so myself. So although I'm not a soccer fan, if you are interested in PES 2018, it is coming to the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, as well as the last generation of consoles, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, this very week. And last but not least, we have NASCAR Heat 2. Coming to the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC, NASCAR Heat 2 brings the most authentic and intense stock car and truck racing of all time. Test your driving skills across 29 NASCAR sanctioned ovals. 29 NASCAR sanctioned ovals, not tracks. No, not not courses, roads maybe, no, that they're ovals. Uh, road courses and the infamous dirty track Eldora Speedway. Race as the biggest names in motorsports with the largest roster of drivers in NASCAR video game history or create your own driver in a custom stock car or truck. Take the racing online against a full field of drivers in rolling seasons as you battle for the top spot on the leaderboards. Backed by popular demand, battle it out with a friend in head-to-head -head local split-screen multiplayer. Hit the track in NASCAR Heat 2 for one-of-a-kind racing experiences. So with NASCAR Heat 2, there has to be a bit of a warning that I'm just going to be very frank about. Uh, this game does not look good. It does not look okay. It doesn't look all right. It is fairly amateur as far as graphics goes. Uh, however, for those fans that want a truly fleshed out NASCAR experience, the same kind of experience you would see in a Gran Turismo or say a Forza, then in order to get that, unfortunately, this game has to have support thrown behind it. Additionally, another warning, NASCAR Heat 1, the original NASCAR Heat game that came out a couple of years back, uh, was not supported. The developers pretty much abandoned it when it was broken. Uh, so with that being in mind, coming forward to NASCAR Heat 2, what's to make me think that won't happen again? With these two facts being presented, we now have the opportunity to speak with our wallets. Of course, I'm not a big fan of NASCAR, wouldn't be buying this regardless, but for those of you that are, uh, you can either A, buy this game and give the devs hell if they do not continue supporting it, or hold on to your money and show them that you're not going to be buying a game that doesn't look good to begin with and is made by developers who obviously do not care about their fans after what happened with the original NASCAR Heat. And I know that development is hard. I know that being a game developer for a smaller game that is not going to have a large fan base is hard, but when you make something, guys, even NASCAR Heat, you have to follow through with promises you made to your fans and at least give them the experience that they want. Finally, let's wrap things up with a few honorable mentions, shall we? Rayman Legends Definitive Edition is coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Following that, we have Bloody Zombies on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation VR uh, with PC coming as well, and this game does not look to be that good, if I'm being honest with you, but it's still worth mentioning because it is a PlayStation VR title. Uh, Baja Edge of Control HD looks fantastic and is coming to the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC. Uh, this game is a remake of a game that came out back in 2008 that I played a good bit as a kid, and I'm excited to see a $30 version of the game coming out in 2017 with support for 4K as well as full HD and remaster graphics and all that good stuff. I'm excited about that one personally. And then Maze is coming out on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, which explores the idea of what would happen if farmers misunderstood the US government's instructions to make corn, and they therefore made sentient corn, which is corn that can think and, and do other things. It's a weird game. And that wraps it up for The Drop this week. If you liked this episode, drop me a like down below and share it on Twitter, Facebook, all of that good social media stuff. And if you happen to be new here, I do upload new videos throughout the week, so there's always something new right here when you do drop out to watch some videos. And of course, I am live streaming on twitch.tv slash the Samuel Adams. You can drop me a follow over there. Uh, but as for right now, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.